Apple has released their iPhone 2.1 firmware update, but there still seem to be many issues. Good to see them making progress though, but I did tell you that making a robust phone operating system was hard. Nokia has announced that every S60 3rd edition handset will now be able to run their free Mail for Exchange application. With MS Exchange being a popular corporate mail and syncing solution, this is a good move. Although I can't help thinking that only a small proportion of the 80 million S60 3rd edition users out there will actually want to sync to a corporate style mailbox. The Nokia N95, N95 8GB and probably N82 by the time you watch this have all had next gen version 30 firmware upgrades adding in the latest maps, engage and share online clients plus many usability and performance tweaks recommended. Head over to Nokia software update if you've got a network unlock device and don't forget the usual backups and precautions. HTC has launched the Windows Mobile based Touch HD which has a large wide VGA 3.8 inch screen plus Wi-Fi, GPS, oodles of RAM and a 5 megapixel camera. Is it aimed at the iPhone? Well, surely, although I'm suspecting that some of the reasons why the Touch Diamond was a no-go, see Show 63, are still an issue, sadly. Also Windows Mobile, the Sony Ericsson Xperia X1 has been demonstrated for the first time with its multiple desktop-like panels interface. As with the Touch HD, I'm a little sceptical of how all these UI layers will work out in practice, but see this URL if you want to watch the whole video. It's very tempting to dismiss this, the Samsung Toco is yet another iPhone wannabe with a better camera. When will Apple do something about the iPhone's appalling camera? Discuss. But apart from the initial similarity, there's quite a bit here that's new, if not necessarily very good. As a user, you start on the widgetized home screen with a sidebar of about a dozen simple widgets, from date and time to music control to an image browser, any of which can be dragged onto the main backdrop. The idea is nice enough, but there aren't really enough widgets here to be interesting. And most people will settle for date and time, mimicking the, the home screen you see on a traditional phone. Touch the menu dot and you're into familiar iPhone-like territory, except that there are less applications with lower sophistication and functionality. The web browser is Access's Netfront, which is okay for mobile websites and simple layouts, but which is disappointing once you start demanding flash and video and any complex interactivity. Most obvious here is that to scroll down a page, or indeed any list or dialogue in a toco, you have to drag your finger down, which is the opposite way round to the iPhone's paper metaphor. You get used to it, but it's not as intuitive here. The application set is surprisingly full with email, PIM apps, and some useful extras such as a video editor, a music recognizer, an RSS reader, a stopwatch, and some games. Ah, yes, games. A single puzzle and the Java version of Google Maps. Since when was Google Maps a game? Still, loading up this application shows up a big flaw of the Toco. Its handling of Java applications is sadly appalling. It's a mind-bender to try and work out which buttons and labels to press, while the Toco tries to mimic a traditional keypadded phone. And not running any kind of smartphone OS, you can't add any kind of extra native applications, so you're stuck with what you're given. Build quality is good, though, with brushed metal back and a so-so 5-megapixel focusing camera with LED flash. It's nowhere near the quality of the Carl Zeiss lens in Nokia's N-series, for example, though. The camera is let down by the mediocre video recording quality seen here. And this is some typical video shot on the Samsung Toco. 320 by 240 by 15 frames a second. The biggest downside of the Toco, along with almost every other touch-based device, bar the Apple iPhone, is that the screen becomes a mirror when you're outdoors, especially in sunlight, which is where you need a phone most. Very disappointing, and it shows yet again how vital the iPhone's capacitive touch system is. Good thing they patented it. So a novel and interesting device for the mainstream, but one which comes up short for anything really demanding. This is the Samsung Toco. Now here's a dilemma. You need a phone with a great camera and, and this is the vital bit, a Xenon flash. And of course, being a phone show regular, you also want lots of smart features so that it can do everything else you need it to do as well. Why Xenon? Well, it's all very well taking beautiful photos and beautiful sunshine during the summer months. But what about evenings and dim days and indoor events? In these cases, you want the phone that's always with you to still take good snaps despite the distinctly less than optimal conditions. The answer is to make a point of going for a phone or smartphone that has a Xenon flash. 
Now, traditional LED flashes are, are more or less a direct electricity to light conversion. They're good, but they're not exactly dazzling. Xenon flashes, as the name suggests, have a little capsule of the little rare gas xenon that plays host to a high voltage, high intensity discharge of less than a tenth of a millisecond. Despite the short duration, the intensity is in the order of thousands of times brighter than phone LED flash, as you can see here, with examples of xenon lit versus LED lit indoor test scenes. And note the fact that you can freeze a moment much, much better with none of the low light blurriness we've all seen from LED phone flashes. Unfortunately, the number of smartphones with Xenon is very low. Top of the pile is this Nokia N82, an S60 phone with every smart feature under the sun, including GPS, Wi-Fi, and the usual Nokia Ovi integration. This comes in silver, as here, or in black, and it's old enough now that you can get it free on contract for £25 a month in the UK, or around £200 ex-contract and unlocked. Now, that's a great deal. Another Nokia S60 phone also has Xenon, by the way, the budget-priced 6220 Classic, reviewed in Show 63. It's cheaper in price, but also cheaper in build quality, and there's no Wi-Fi, a showstopper for me at least. Staying with S60, but away from Nokia, you'll remember I reviewed the Samsung G810 in Show 64. This was a, a clunky device that was let down by immature software and by a poor screen outdoors. But it did have Xenon Flash and a proper optical zoom. Mind you, it's hard to find on contract, so it could work out expensive. There's nothing that I know of in the Windows Mobile, Palm or Blackberry world with Xenon at the moment. Uh, you can drop down to the ranks of feature phones with Sony Ericsson's rather effective K850i and newer C902 handsets, both rocking a, a Xenon flash. But of course, you'll have to compromise slightly in terms of what else you can do with the phone. And that's about it, really, barring a few oddities, such as the LG Beauty. Have you tried a Xenon Flash? Would you actively seek it out? Or is it just a nice to have bullet point? Comments welcome. Although in one sense it gets harder and harder to say new things about Nokia's range of S60 handsets, it does get more and more impressive to consider how many of the things that I was raving about in their flagship devices almost two years ago have now made it into far more mainstream phones. Witness this, the Nokia N79, seen here in Apple-esque white. Uh, it's a good example of this. Forgive the feature list, but Wi-Fi, GPS, 5 megapixel camera, VGA video recording, 3.5 millimeter audio out, FM transmitter, TV out, accelerometer, navi wheel. It's got the best bits of just about every other N-series device, all in the one compact body, weighing only 97 grams. The N79 may not be as sexy as an Apple iPhone, but there's immense functionality here, and for the man in the street, it looks like a phone which is sometimes very important. The plastic construction means that the N79 is a little creaky in places, but it also means reasonably good durability for everyday use. What are its unique selling points? Well, the styling shrieks fashion, backed up by the return of Nokia's Express On covers in the smartphone world. There's a sting in the tail here because there's a chip embedded in each one, which in turn activates one of the built-in coloured S60 themes. Change a cover, the OS changes with it. Neat. Also unique is the use of dual LED lighting for video recording. Seen here, this is shot on the Nokia N79. The LEDs are very bright. You must have your friends complaining. Uh, this is the quality and total darkness. See what you think. Having such great nighttime video recording will make it a bit of a winning phone in the 20 something market, I predict, for those with an active nightlife. Ray over at All About Symbian referred to the N79 as having the X factor. I think he's right. Uh, whereas its immediate predecessor, the N78, was disappointing in many ways I won't go into, the N79 will prove much longer lived and will sell an order of magnitude more units. One to watch.